Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jump Ministry message of the day. We're starting something brand new today. We're going to have mission moments on Friday. What I mean by this is we're going to encounter people who go out into the world and share the gospel about Jesus Christ. They may be kids or older people or, you know, teenagers. I don't know. But today, we're going to explore something called God Uses the Ordinary. I want you all to know that Jesus can use you in a powerful way, and so now it's time to see how does it really work. So, get your Bibles, because we will be exploring something in the Bible right after this video. God uses the ordinary. Here we go. My name is Brandon Pitts and I'm from Mississippi and I've been serving the Nehemiah teams for two months in Thailand. My name is Alex Tisdale. I think God brought me to Pry to realize that it doesn't take somebody that's just extraordinary to, to share the gospel. We wake up every morning without an, any idea what's going to happen and we just fully trust that God is going to provide and He proves it every single day that we've been here. So each day we get up and go out and are intentional about finding a place to share the gospel. A lot of times that's a coffee shop. This particular day, um, we come in and there's nobody else in there. And so we get there and we're communicating with the, the cash registry lady. Her name is Ping. Me and Brandon actually visit there two or three times a week. And being there, we've been able to, to build a relationship with the workers. It's really hard for us to communicate with them because of the language barrier. And, and one way we can overcome that is through a tablet that our OMB supervisor has given us. And it has in Thai the Creation of Christ story. And we walk around to the other side of the counter and sit back there with them actually and go through Creation of Christ. We, wa we watch a 20 minute video and God blessed our time because nobody else come in. One thing me and Alice are really involved in is the badminton, the local badminton court. I've never, never thought about playing badminton ever. Um, we're really terrible, both of us, but had a great time and we're actually building relationships with those people. And now our OMB supervisors of Patton Ops, they're heavily involved there and it's just real nice to see those relationships get passed on to them. We keep telling them, look guys, if you had not been out here, we would simply not have access to those people and they would not have heard the gospel had you not come. We were looking for a place to where we can show a video for Christ for people in a public setting. And the crazy thing about it is we're going to share it at a Buddhist temple. Not only did they say that we could use this area, which is part of their grounds, but they're also going to provide the chairs and the tables for us. Um, we set up outside the temple in the courtyard um, and then it started to rain. And they actually allowed us to take our stuff and move it inside the temple and show the Christian film in the Buddhist temple. He wants himself to be known and he's, gonna, he's finding ways to make that happen and he's using students to do it. I like your new hat. Let's tell the kids all about your new hat. Hi guys! Hey, we went to the farmer's market and we got some sweet corn and while we were walking around Corey kept looking at my hat, and he kept saying, How come I don't have a cool hat? And I said, Well, do you want a cool hat? And he said, Yeah, I want a cool hat too. So we looked around at different hats, and they just didn't look as cool as the one he made himself. He's got himself a little hat now, and so now we are a match pair. All right, I've got my little whatever it is, and he's got his little whatever it is. And look at that. Look how creative he was. All right? and he made it sparkly blue on top. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but what fun that was. So we just saw the Amish people walking around and he decided he wanted to have an Amish hat. So we came home and made one. Praise God. Today, we just watched a video about how God uses ordinary people to spread the word about Jesus Christ to a lost world. Wasn't that neat? And you see how the kids were just riding their bikes and they said, we're just ordinary people. And every day they get up and they have no idea where God's going to lead them. But he takes them out and he finds a place for them to serve. 
And I'm going to start this every Friday with you and call it Friday Missionary Moments. And we're going to look at young people out using the talents and gifts God's given them. We've studied the Sermon on the Mount. We've learned ways we're supposed to be. We learned about how we'll be blessed if we're persecuted for righteousness. So if you go out on a mission, you serve, and you're telling people about the, the, the joy found in Jesus Christ, and they reject you, or they tell you to leave, they don't want to hear it anymore, you just know that God will bless you. He is always on your side, even when the world's not on your side. So I wanted to show you that this is real. What we're learning here isn't just a bunch of stuff to learn, and then we get older and we go on to another Sunday school class and we don't talk about it anymore. No, this is starting a new life for you where you can learn how God can use you. He uses Corey. He uses me. He uses Silas. He can use anything or anybody he wants to tell other people about Jesus. Remember they said they played badminton and they're terrible at it? I started thinking, when's the last time I played badminton? I haven't played badminton with Miss Cricket for 20 years. And if I can find the set somewhere or we'll go to Walmart, that's fun. And you're just knocking that little thing around. You know, that little plastic thing with the rubber on the bottom. And it's really fun. And I'll beat her because she's no good at it. So, oh, that was not nice. <laughs> and she doesn't watch this anyway. So she'll never know about it unless one of you all tells. Look, we are in a How Great Is Our God devotion for a beautiful Friday. And I've told you, Friday is my favorite day of the week. And I couldn't wait to get home. And, and Corey and I went and got sweet corn. And it was just such a fun day. We're going to learn about dive in. And I want you to listen to the, the translation of the Bible from your Bible. This is the Christian Standard Bible for Kids. Psalm 119, verse 162. I rejoice over your promise like one who finds vast treasure. What is he talking about in here? Well, let's talk about dive in and see if we can make sense of this verse. A synote, okay, C-E-N-O-T-E. It says it's pronounced synote, is a special kind of sinkhole. When the ceiling of an underground cave, well, when it caves in, it creates what's called a sinkhole. If that sinkhole fills up with water from rain or an underground stream, it becomes a cyanote. Hmm. The Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico has thousands of cyanotes. In fact, most of the area's water comes from them. That explains why they are so important, why they were so important to the ancient Mayans who lived there. Sinoti even comes from an ancient Mayan word that means sacred well. Isn't this fascinating? Today, these pools are often used for swimming and scuba diving. Archaeologists diving into their depths have discovered the fossils of mammoths, sloths, giant jaguars, and even camels along with pieces of gold and jade and pottery. This is so neat. I've never heard of this before. And of course, there are all the natural cave treasures of stalactites and stalagmites. We talked about them a while ago. Do you remember which is which? Mm. When you dive into a cyanote, who knows what treasure you might find? Kind of like God's word. When you dive in, you're sure to find a treasure. It might be something about God or something you never knew before, or the answer to a tough problem you've been facing, or a promise that reminds you just how much God loves you. Unlike other books, the words of the Bible are made alive by the power of the Holy Spirit. We read about that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And which means there's always a treasure waiting for you whenever you dive inside the Bible. I've been telling you since I met you how precious our Bibles are. I hope you'll listen to this today, Lord. I thank you for the treasure of the Bible. Please teach my heart to want to dive into its treasures every day. Oh, a sign of tea. Look that up if you get a chance, kids. Maybe I'll cut the picture out today and you can see some kids swimming and she found a little jar on the bottom. Oh, before you dive into God's word, Say a prayer asking him to show you the treasures he wants you to find. Then try looking for one of these things, a truth about who God is, hmm, a promise God has made for you, or an action God wants you to take. Check out 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, hmm, or Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, and 
Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, to begin, to begin collecting his treasures. Would you like to go to those verses with me? Let's use it sort of kind of as a Bible drill. Corey, would you read the verses? I'll turn to them and you read them. Okay, all right, that'll be fun. First, we'll turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Real quick, guys, because I know you all want to get out there and start enjoying your weekend. 1 John, and I'm using, look at that, I'm using my left hand and I'm doing okay. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Did you all beat me there? Let's see what the verse says. Did I say the right verse? 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Here we go. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. What are we supposed to be looking for? Let's see. A truth about who God is, a promise God has for you, or an action he wants you to take. So what is this? It sounds to me like a truth about God. Would you read it for us, Corey? Uh-huh. Ready? The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. That's something. That's a truth about God. Niggers my hat. Pastor Bill. I'll get it. All right. There goes his hat. His string came off. Tell you what, you had more luck with your ball cap. I don't know where it is. We got to work on that hat. Okay, let's go to the next one. That will be Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Let's see if it's a truth about God or an action he wants you to take. Oh, boy. Let's see. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Let's see. Here it is. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. What do you think that one is? Is that a truth about who God is, a promise God has for you, or an action he wants you to take? Would you read the verse again to the kids? Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's the bill. What? That's a promise. That is a promise. That's a promise. All right, let's go to another one. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. And this is me where we end, and then we'll say our prayer and say goodbye, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. Do you want to read it? Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pastor Bill. What? That's something God wants us to do. Love our neighbor as ourself. You're very right, Corey. We learned the truth about God. We learned a promise God has for us. And we learned an action God wants us to take. Isn't that fun? And that, what did that take us? Three minutes. And we just went through and found three new treasures in the Bible. Okay, you all have a great weekend. I love you. Let's pray. And Corey, you already have your hat off. I know what to do with your hat. We'll, we'll put one of these little bands in it like mine has. And then yours will stay on your head, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. Lord, we go into our weekend asking you for blessings, asking us for, or asking you for health, Lord, asking you to keep us safe, asking you to watch over our families and our friends. We rejoice that our friends have come home from the hospital and they're feeling better, and every day they're getting strong. Lord, I ask a blessing on their families, that their families will help them, help them get stronger so that they can worship you and give you all praise and thanks. Lord, thank you for another beautiful week with my friends here in the Jump Ministry. We pray that the children will learn something today about how God can use them, and they don't have to be super-duper people. They just have to be willing to serve you, Lord. Maybe playing a game of badminton or just talking to someone. We thank you for the technology that allows other people to understand each other when we don't speak the same language. That's just amazing, Lord. So we can't wait for, for Sunday to be able to get with our friends in church and just sing songs and hear more about you. Thank you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a great weekend. Drink lots of water because it's hot out there, isn't it? Uh -huh. Okay, lots of water and be good. Be good. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Well, thank you for spending time with us today. This has been the Jump Ministry Daily Devotional Message. If your children have any questions, they can email Pastor Bill at jumpministry at mac.com and my phone number's in the membership directory. This has been 
Jump Ministry from the Church at St. Charles. Have a great day.